In this video, we're going to take a look at what happened in the governor's races. There's not that many, but we're going to see which shifted toward one party or the other. If you want to skip ahead to the map, there's going to be a chapter down below in the description. But first, let's get a refresher here and glance over the results for these governors. 2024 is kind of an off year for a governor's elections. There were only 11 states that had one, but eight of those were open seats due to the incumbents being term limited or deciding to not run again. However, after everything was all said and done, zero seats changed parties. So we're going to have eight new faces coming in next year. And if we go back to much earlier in the year, there was some potential for there to be some competitive races. Most notably, it was going to be North Carolina. That was the huge one between the controversial Mark Robinson and the less controversial Josh Stein. Stein went on to actually trounce Robinson by double digits. And as more controversy surrounded Robinson, that state fell off the map for being competitive. And in one sense, it's shocking that the Tar Heel state voted to the left of the other blue states, Washington and Delaware. Some people said it wasn't going to happen, especially due to Trump being on the top of the ticket, he's going to get more voters to come out for Robinson. Looks like there was enough crossover vote there to make that not remotely the case. The narrowest margin was actually in New Hampshire. After North Carolina moved off the radar for competition, New Hampshire became the next in line to focus on. But even that race ended up not being competitive. The polling showed it could be, but a 9-10 to 10 point win there for Ayotte the Republican meant not really much competition there either. Everything else was double digits. Some of the margins narrowed, as we're going to take a look at in a minute, but not at all an exciting year here as far as governors are concerned. With very few exceptions, the political polarization is what won out. So a lot of drought streaks are going to continue. The Republicans in Washington and Delaware, Democrats in Utah and North Dakota, it's going to be at least another four years there before the opposing party has another chance to snap those streaks. The last one of these states we've got to point out here is going to be Vermont. Now we all know this is an extremely blue state on a federal level. Statewide, it's also liberal, but they're also willing to cross over and vote for a Republican that matches that ideology. That's going to be Republican Phil Scott, who won his fifth term. So whether you love him or hate him, and they certainly love him in Vermont, I think you got to respect somebody winning five consecutive terms as the underdog political party. And not only did he win, he won by more than 50 points. Each of his winning margins has been more than the previous. A lot of those voters crossed over and voted for Bernie Sanders in the Senate and Kamala Harris for president. But Phil Scott has figured out the secret sauce. He's unbelievably popular, and some states do want a little bit of balance and a check on their state legislature with their governor at the top of the ticket. It's similar to Kentucky with Andy Bashir, the Democrat, but the legislature is overwhelmingly Republican. So maybe Scott runs yet again for a sixth term in a couple of years. I'm sure it's his if he wants it. I'm not sure what he could do to have his popularity take a serious hit. Now there might still be a little bit of vote trickling in, but let's say that everything is pretty much final and we could take all that data and we could put it on a spreadsheet and we can compare it to the last time these states had an election for governor in 2020. New Hampshire and Vermont have two-year terms for governor, so we're going to use 2022 for that data. So real quick, we've got the state in the left column, then we've got the 2024 winner, then we've got their incumbency status in the next column, then we've got the previous elections percentages for the Democrat, the Republican, then the current Democrat percentage and the current Republican percentage. Then we're going to see what the shifts are for the Democrats, then the Republicans. In the final column, all the way on the right are going to be the net shifts between the two parties, between the two elections. So for example, the first state is Delaware. The winner there was Matt Meyer. He was not an incumbent. And in the last election, John Carney, the winner, pulled in 59.5. The Republican got 38.6. This time, Matt Meyer dipped down a little bit to 56.1. The Republican, Mike Ramone, got 43.9. That's a loss of 3.4 for the Dems, a gain of 5.3 for the GOP. So you combine those, that's a total net shift of 8.7 toward the Republicans. It's a blue state, but I'd say it's a moderately significant shift. It's an open seat. I expected the margin to tighten. It did, but it was still a safe margin there for Meyer. Next in Indiana, there was another open seat. Democrats had a big gain there of 9%. Republicans ticked down 2.1. Some of that is going to be because it was an open seat, but also there was a big reduction in the third party support for the Libertarian candidate, and that resulted in the biggest shift out of all these states. That's going to be 11.1% toward the Democrats. That sounds like a lot, but again, it's still not enough for the state to become actually competitive. Braun still won that again by double digits. Next in Missouri, it's another open seat. Slight loss for the Dems, slight gain for the GOP, and overall the state got 4.1% redder. In Montana, we've got an incumbent Republican Greg Gianforte. He did even better this time. The Democrats went down 3%. Gianforte went up 45 That's a decent 7.5% shift toward Gianforte. In New Hampshire, just two-year terms here, but we've got Kelly Ayotte replacing Governor Sununu. Dems had a gain here of 2.8. Republicans did go down 3.4. That's a modest 6.2% bluer, but still, in the end, not enough to make this state actually competitive. Now we've got North Carolina, an open seat won by Josh Stein, the Democrat. He did better than Roy Cooper did for 
four years ago by 3.4, while Mark Robinson did almost seven points worse than Dan Forrest last time. So that comes out to a notable 10.3% shift toward the Dems. In North Dakota, it's an open seat won by U.S. Rep. Kelly Armstrong. This time, both parties gained since 2020. Dems won up a slight 0.6. Republicans won up 2.5. So it got slightly redder by 1.9. In Utah, Spencer Cox secured a second term. And we had the Democrats dropping support by 1.4. But there was also a third-party write-in candidate that was supported by some Republicans. That caused the support for Cox to drop off by 9.2. That means the state got bluer by 7.8. But still another overwhelming win for the Republican. Then in Vermont, not a lot of change here in Phil Scott's landslide win. Democrats went down 2.1 as Scott went up another 2.4. That's a four and a half point shift in his direction. In Washington, it was an open seat won by Bob Ferguson. Even less change here. Democrats went down nine tenths of a percent. Republicans up 1.2. The state got redder by a slight 2.1. And finally, West Virginia, it's an open seat won by Patrick Morrissey. The Dem support ticked up here 1.4. It ticked down for the Republicans by one and a half. So we got a slight blue shift here of 2.9. Some of these final percentages might change just a little bit. But as I've said, nothing too shocking here. But the biggest one is probably going to be North Carolina. It's a purple state. Some people consider it to be 50-50. At a federal level, the Republicans seem to have the edge. But for state government, the Democrats are going to continue to control that governor's mansion. And it going by a double-digit margin in that direction, it seemed unthinkable about a year ago. So those are all the shifts. And if you want to help visualize this data, we can take it all and apply it to a map. If we do that, this is what it's going to look like. We've got similar shading here. The 10-point shifts are going to be the darkest colors, and it's going to go all the way down to under 5%. Those are going to be the lightest colors. No tilt margins this time because nothing was under 1%. The narrowest, though, is going to be North Dakota, just under 2%. And it's a total mix of states on which way they moved. Six of them got redder. That's Washington, Montana, North Dakota, Missouri, Vermont, and Delaware. And the other five got bluer. That's Utah, Indiana, West Virginia, North Carolina, and New Hampshire. In one sense, I wish there was more excitement here. There were really no upsets whatsoever. You'd think with so many open seats, there would have been a few more here that were on the table for being potential flips. I thought there was an outside chance that happens with Washington, maybe even Indiana. Turns out none of that happened, but this is what it looks like as far as shifts go, comparing the last governor's elections in 2020 or in 2022 in a couple of states, all the way up to what we just got in 2024. Every election is unique. There's no way to predict what's going to happen in another four years, but if polarization stays the same and a lot of these incumbents run again, it's going to be tough to imagine these states flipping anytime soon without a significant scandal or a rock star candidate that emerges. I would guess the only one that might be semi-competitive next time would be North Carolina. But at that point also, Greg Gianforte in Montana will be term limited. There's a potential opening there for the Dems, and they're not a stranger to electing a Democrat for governor in that state. And if Phil Scott retires in a couple of years, then that state will definitely come on the map in terms of competition. But anyway, that's a look at the shifts for governor between 2020 and 2024. So let me know in the comments, any surprises here in any of these states? I would guess there's not going to be many, but what are you going to be looking at in the next four years? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.